lovers. Welcome to episode two of The Woodshed. Thanks for all the great feedback on the first episode. I really appreciate that. I don't know what I'm doing. It's my first time on the internet other than online gaming. So if you guys have any suggestions, things that you, you want to see covered, topics or whatever, let me know. Put it in the comments. Uh, you know, follow my social media, post a link on something and be like, hey, dude, cover this. This will be cool. With that said, I did get some feedback uh, on the first episode and how we were talking about odd note groupings, playing them what I would call linear, you know, across the fretboard this way. And people were like, dude, you should totally cover some of the Joe Bonamassa, Eric Johnson style pentatonic runs that you do that are like all in your playing. And of course, I wear those influences on my sleeve. If anybody ever says, dude, you sound like Eric Johnson. I'm like, well, yeah, he's awesome. So there. With that said, I wanted to talk about odd note groupings in a different format instead of this format that we did last time, right? So this time, this week, we're gonna do it in that very uh, Bonamassa, EJ-esque kind of thing. So background, um, I grew up playing mandolin for those that don't know, and I was way into bluegrass and guys like Sam Bush and Christy Lee and Bela Fleck and all that stuff. And so the first uh, exposure I ever got to Eric Johnson, uh, I was working in a theater in Pigeon Forge. If you don't know, Pigeon Forge is kind of like a Branson or uh, Vegas, mini Vegas with no gambling. <laughs> and they have all of these theater shows, right? So I was working in one of those theaters and I was playing acoustic guitar and mandolin. And I had an electric guitar, but I wasn't really into electric guitar. I was probably 17 or so. There was a guy there, I was playing some stuff. I just, for whatever reason, I was like playing his electric guitar. And he was like, oh man, you must listen to like, Paul Gilbert, and Eric Johnson, Steve Morris. I was like, I have no idea who these guys are. Uh, it was really funny, um, but he was basing it on my, my technique and how I picked everything. And obviously the guys he compared me to picked everything. And I said, I have no idea what any of that is. So he made me a CD, uh, work tape or whatever. I'll never forget it had like Van Halen's Eruption, uh, Steve Vines for the Love of God. It had uh, Dream Theater, I wanna say it was like Under a Glass Moon, maybe. It had a really iconic Dream Theater song on it. And it had Eric Johnson's Cliffs of Dover. It had Joe Satriani's like Surfing with the Alien. Basically it was like, this is everything you should know that you have no idea about. Steve Morris's Too Many Notes was on there. And I went home and listened to it and I was just like leveled, just completely leveled. Um, so I went out, uh, there was a place in Knoxville called the Disc Exchange. At the time I was living in Gatlinburg, I drove all the way to Knoxville and I, I, I found the, the first G3 recording on DVD and it was uh, it was Joe and Steve Vai and, and Eric and Eric was playing the big 335. He had the Princess Leia earmuffs on. It was like, I, the, the dude just was on fire that night. So uh, I got way into his playing and anyways, I didn't realize at the time when I was working on his playing that I was approaching the picking. Uh, uh, from a mandolin player's standpoint, which means I, lit, I led with a downstroke all the time. And Eric would sometimes lead with an upstroke, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, check out Troy Graydon's Cracking the Code on some of those EJ picking things. But I wanted to preface that whole story of uh, useless knowledge uh, because I'm going to pick everything my way, right? It's not going to be like, this is how EJ does it. But what I am going to give you is the harmony and the sound to some of the EJ-isms, things that I hear him do, things that are in Joe Bonamassa's play. So first of all, the first thing we need to know about is the harmony context to get up and down the fretboard. Uh, we see the word, oh, it's just pentatonics, it's just pentatonics. And yes, that is true. 90% of it is, quote unquote, just pentatonics. But the thing that's interesting is how it's phrased and how the groupings happen and the cascading, right? These guys are doing these things, and I think it's from, they've been doing it so long, um, and I can associate a little bit because I've been playing in this style for so long that I don't really have to count the numbers of, of notes that I'm playing. For example, if you check out maybe Ben Eller's lesson or uh, British guy Ross Campbell's lesson, they break it down, they're like, okay, it's five notes. <laughs> And, 
and and that is true. That is 100% true. Those guys nail it. The flip is, is I think when Eric and Joe are going through this, they're not thinking about the exact amount of notes. They're kind of improvising the line in their head and thinking of the, uh, I always like to call it like rolling down the stairs. Sean Lang was really great at it, where you're mixing up the groups, the note groupings in ways that have a cascading effect. Um, so let's talk about the harmony that gets us there. Pentatonic, yeah, but right but you're not going to be outlining the full pentatonic in one position and then moving a position and doing the same thing again and doing the same thing again for example i would start off by learning the pentatonics uh in a way that transverses transverses transversives trans transverse trans i don't know you transfer momentum up and down the uh the fretboard i would start by looking at a way to cross the fretboard linearly in your pentatonics. Let's do, um, for sake of this this uh, exercise, we're gonna do A minor pentatonic, right? So we're gonna start on flat seven, right? So outline four note groupings, flat seven, right there. And then when you're at that note, which is the fourth, you slide up to the fifth. And you start seeing the root here. Right? And I'm, I'm hearing that in my head as a pickup note. Right? And so once you see that shape on the E and A strings, you can drop that down when you're at the fifth degree. Basically, you're going from flat seven to five. And I'm not talking frets, I'm talking intervals. Flat seven is right behind the root. Minor third. Right? Fourth. Fifth. Once you're at fifth, drop a string set, the whole thing will, will repeat itself. Flat seven, right? Root, minor third, fourth, fifth. Now, if you're tuned like Tom Quell, you can keep, keep this pattern up. If you're tuned in standard tuning, you have to move up one half fret, one semitone, and now your flat seven will be on the B string. Flat seven is G in the key of A. Right? Minor third, fourth, fifth. You can almost hear the way if you phrase the line correctly, just, just moving through your pentatonics in this motion will almost get you some of that phrasing that those guys have, right? Um, so you basically you take that formula of finding the pentatonic in a way that it'll move across the, the, the guitar and do it everywhere. Here's another position to do it right here. Flat seven, right root, three, four, five. Flat seven, root, three, four, five. And now let's just take one little thing that I did just then and look at it. Like I went backwards, right, for one note just to grab that root again, and it already starts to sound like EJ-esque shades of Bonamassa. Right here it is again, one more time, really slow. Root, or sorry, flat seven to root, then three, four, and instead of moving up to five, I'm gonna hit that root again. And then seven one. You'll be able to walk from here, right? That's the harmony you need. You, you just look at your minor pentatonic box and uh, think about moving through pentatonics through different areas without having to stop and reset, okay? This is the most important part of the lesson. The most important topic here is to not stop and reset every time you go to a new position. One of the things that I look at that helps me is looking at the outlier fingers, right? So I use a lot of this shape and I use a lot of like this shape in my fingerings. When I have root, anything moving here, I know that I can continue up on this side of my hand. If I move with one of my end fingers, I can play with this side of my hand, right? And it keeps me from doing this. This is what I want you to avoid. Okay. 
and let's try to move through a couple of pentatonic positions. I'm going to give them to you first, um, like right here. Let's say we got this one. Root is there. Always look for your root, like root A. Then minor third. Then four, five. And there's seven. So there's one, three, five, seven. And then when you start outlining that, you start hearing those little phrases that guys like EJ and uh, Joe will do. So now we're gonna look at that position and now we're gonna try to get down one more position to here. And then we're gonna try to end up down here. Right? So let's take that really slow so you can see the positions. That's one, three, four, five, seven, right? And now we're gonna move down and outline it where the root, the, it, watch what happens. Watch this, this is what I was talking about with the outline fingers. I'm gonna move my first finger down from covering the root, so now he's gonna cover the seven. And the third finger is gonna be my anchor for the root. So I'm still in the same position, this right here. Now we're gonna use that trick and maybe this time we slide down with our third finger instead of our first finger. Let's move with our first finger this time. Now play here. Now we're gonna move with our third finger. important thing is when I'm, I'm doing this stuff, I'm not seeing quote unquote a scale. There is no like Eric Johnson scale or Joe Bonamassa scale. It's pentatonic harmony, right? It's pentatonic harmony and it's moving the formula around and being fluid as you shift positions. So scalar playing has that very um, stagnant kind of sound where it's like well, you can expect what happened. <laughs> It doesn't have that wider sound that, that like Eric and Joe use. So phase one is looking at your harmony, right? Part two is how to get from one pentatonic shape to the next without quote unquote stopping and resetting. The stop and reset is the enemy of the EJ Bonamassa sound, right? You wanna be fluid, you wanna be jumping through those positions as fluid as possible. So lastly, phase three of this uh, little tutorial on, uh, on some of the guys that I look up to, stacking triads on a different chord tone on a different root note. For those that haven't seen the super awesome Cliffs of Dover that's live at Austin City Limits, that's like the one, right? And at the beginning, if I'm not mistaken, he starts with this G chord that is on a boss hold pedal. And he starts playing all this. And outlining all these different harmonies. So that's in the key of G. Let's move this up to A, like the little intro that I did. I was starting out with uh, an A major triad, mixing it. That kind of sound, where it's almost like a sus four or just a sus. And then I moved to the four chord of A major and played through that D position, those D triads. I moved up to kind of a G sound. And if you see, that's a tall triad where I have uh, root, fifth, third. And then this is where it gets into the A minor based family of harmony, right? So then I play F. Then build again, moving that up in whole steps to G. So that's where it gets really minor. But instead of just landing on that A at the very end, 
I use an E7 to build that final question mark in my in my harmony. Eric would even maybe even use uh, a diminish there. And then you're right there at A minor. Again, when I'm improvising in this style, and I think when, when Joe and Eric improvise from this style, it's, it's in a matter of hearing chords outside of looking at scales, right? You're trying to hear intervals and, and hear movement without looking at it from a scalar point of view. When you're trying to, to practice this, I suggest just letting the A string ring out and walking through each string in, in maybe in pairs, okay? So you could do it and just find flat seven to one. And then in another pair, you could make the string sets farther away and wider, right? And now you can sus by just raising that third of the chord, right? Because we're looking at this kind of chord. That sus sound is in Eric's playing and in Joe's playing all the time. You hear, when I outline those triads, I'm just playing G triads and G chord tones over the A. And, and a way to practice that's just try to find all your flat seven to one. There's flat seven, G, I'm just playing root and, and fifth, and then root and fifth of A, and then third and root of G, and then third and root of A. Help your brain think intervallically. Okay, so let's just do a recap here on what's gonna happen. To practice this style of playing, um, you look at the harmony first, right? So you pick a chord like A that we're in today, and you look at how the intervals start resetting in different shapes across the guitar. To where you're seeing the guitar kind of look like this and not like this, not like chunks. With what I did there, I simply played A minor pentatonic in one octave, then moved it up to another octave move it up to the final octave, and then into the phrase. From there, we look at odd note groupings and how they help us play through this stuff. Groupings of five, right? Or, right? Lesson from episode one. Uh, that's still useful here. And it's not really EJ esque, that's a little more of like my branding on pentatonics. And, and I know this, this lesson is supposed to be more, more focused on uh, Joe and EJ, but it, it can help you. Uh, get through those those shifts, those position shifts. Okay, guys, let's take a look real quick at the picking hand. I alternate pick everything. There is no real uh, secret here that I'm doing. Let's take the, the really fast lick that starts it off. I always consider this the wind up. I always, I, 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 to me and Eric and Joe's playing, they're always like winding up into the downbeat, right? It's never just... <laughs> It's never just like square like that. It always ends up sounding something like. It's always got that kind of wind up feel. So let's start with a triad yet again. So that's like a, a G sus triad. That's a very holy triad. G sus. That's an awful joke. So we're gonna use that G sus, and then we're gonna outline A minor. I'm trying to give you an angle with the picking hand. I alternate 
pick everything, right? So there's no secret, there's no magic button uh, for picking technique. You gotta, you gotta go to Troy Grady. He's the guy there. Um, so when I started that, I outlined that that G triad, and then have the nine in there from A. Nine is just a two. Don't ever get scared of nine, eleven, and thirteen. That's just like saying two, four, six, right? So when I say nine, that's just a two. That's just the, the next note in the scale up from the root. There. So that's the, that's a, I'm gonna slow that down so you can catch that lick. That's that kind of descending, uh, cascading signature, Bonamassa EJ thing. Watch first finger get the, he's gonna handle the shifts here. I'm gonna play in this position till I'm done. And then I'm gonna shift down again using either the third or the, the third finger or the first finger. And that time I use the first finger, right? Here would be one with a third. Right? And one of the last little tips to sound like EJ and Joe is to like hit the lowest note that you're gonna hit in your in your scale. Uh, let's take that one. And instead of stopping on that, they always like to hit the octave up or maybe even higher, right? And it's always like that big finale. All in all, there's three main points here. One, learning your pentatonic positions but not playing them like chunked up, right? And then two, looking at your transition fingers, how you're gonna get to and from the next position without stopping the line, all right? Three is like triads from the chord tone, from the root that you're playing in. And an easy way to practice that, guys, is just to let your low string ring out and play the notes from the scale on one string. Then when that string's done, play them on another string. There's just pentatonic, and then same all the way up. And then you start pairing them together. And right there, when it, you heard it twist, I just used a different chord. I used an F chord over an A. Right, so that was that sound. And the final thing was the, the picking pattern, which is just alternate picked. I wish I had something more clever to say there. Check out Troy Grady's page for, um, for the exact picking if you want to get into leading with an upstroke and some of that stuff. For me, my picking is just so ingrained on alternate picking that that's just what I... That's what I need to stick to because that's what I can make work. I certainly hope everyone has enjoyed episode two of The Woodshed. I'm still learning. I don't know how to internet, but I am learning. Let me know what you want me to cover, topics you'd like to see. Um, this doesn't have to be married to just guitar instructional stuff. If there is something in the guitar community you'd like to discuss, if you'd like me to cover um, tonal aspects, how to get tone, how to record tone, live tone, tricks that I use. Let me let me know in the comments section. You know, I, I'm, I'm really relying on all the feedback from you guys to help create this channel and make this something that you guys want to see. And if not, I'll just go back to playing video games. So, cheers. <laughs>